Okay, kids. No, I don't need you, dog. Get down. So today we're going to start making handles. And uh, the very first step in making candles is to take our jars and put a wick in them, like that. Now the key is that we need the wick to be dead center in the middle of the jar. And then when we pour the wax in there, we got to make sure that it stays in the center so that you get a uniform heat pool around it so it will melt the wax uniformly. Now I am using a uh, uh, cotton wick system. This is a uh, an Eco 10 is the model number of this wick, an e ECO 10, one zero. And uh, they come from my supplier with a little metal base on them. And so I grab a little bit of this uh, putty, which I use to put onto the bottom. I just, just a pinch of this. This is real gummy, sticky stuff. I really don't know what it's comprised of, but it's, uh, it's really sticky stuff. And I just grab just a little, about the size of a, about half the size of a pea. And I form that and put that over the center of the doohicker like that. And then what I've been doing is I take a pen and I remove the ends out of the pen so I just have the tube. This is a, uh, a, a Bic, a Bic stick. Anyhow, I put the, uh, I put the uh, uh, wick in, in that like this. And then what this does, this enables me to locate the base into the center of the glass um, and also to put pressure down on it to seat it. So first thing I do is I go in here and I find the center, which is there. And then I use the, the, the pen tube to push that down real hard. And now when I remove the tube, I have my wick situated in there. Now there's a lot of different ways you could do this. You could actually use some hot glue. Uh, they have little uh, peel and sticks, you know, double-sided tape you could use. Uh, there's a lot of different ways of doing this. I like this method because when you're done, when all is said and done, you can simply just pull it out of the jar and the jar is still clean in the bottom and you removed this. And the reason why that's important to me is I want to make sure that I am not creating more solid waste to go into the landfills. I want to create a product, let me stab that down in there. I want to create a product that, uh, there you go, right back in the same jar, um, that is recyclable. That's why I use uh, basin jars for my jars for my candles. I could use other types of jars. I could use jars that just have a, a metal lid that sits on or a cork that goes in or, you know, some of the uh, more high-end candles, they use, you know, this sort of a thing with a little seal on there kind of deal, uh, commercial candle. Uh, but my problem with those is, is then what do you use those jars for later on? Yeah, and you, you, have, a, you have a recycling issue. Now the other thing that I've done with these straws is I've, or these pens, is I've drilled the hole through the middle. And the reason for that is, is then I can take this wick and put it up through that pen and slide that pen down. So when I pour my wax in here, my melted wax, this pen will hold that wick up straight and centered in the jar uh, so I have a nice clean, uh, a nice clean bend. You see this one is set up, put the straw on it. Now I'll tell you, drilling these pens, drilling this hole crosswise through there to put the wick up through, proved to be a bit of a challenge. 
um, hard to drill through a round, especially something that small diameter, without the use of like a drill press and a block. So I had a bit of a challenge doing that, but I figured it out. I've had enough experience doing that kind of stuff. So, so here we just take a jar, do this with you again. We pull the wick out. Again, an Eco 10. We grab a pinch, a pinch of this black sticky stuff, black snot, form a little P, form a little P on the bottom, thread the wick onto a pen tube. I have a dozen of these all set up. I'm going to do a dozen jars. Again, locate that into the bottom of the jar in the center, push down on the straw so it makes good contact, pull the straw up, and then thread the wick through the holes in the middle. And there we are. We're all set and ready to go. There's another jar all set and ready to go. Now I just got to do that 10 times. So pull the lid off, pull out a wick, itchy nose, got a little Grab a little, see how this stuff is in here? Grab a little more of a pinch on that stuff. Oh, that was probably enough for two of them. Put that on there. Put that on the bottom. Thread the pin onto the wick. Use that to center that into the middle of the jar. <clears throat> Push down on it. Remove the straw and then carefully thread that wick up through the pen sideways. There we go. Some, some of them probably should have drilled them out a little bit bigger drill bit, but there you go. That's all set and ready to go. There's another one all set and ready to go. So I'm going to aim this down so you can see what I'm doing down here. And maybe you'll be able to see this a little easier. So, okay. So we take a jar. See if I can get this. Take a jar. There we go. Pull out a wick. Let me pull them all out of there. I got 12 wicks, so. Pull out a wick. Grab a bit of the sticky stuff. Just, I just pinch off just a little bit and I kind of roll it into a little ball about the size, a little bit smaller than a pea. Put that onto the bottom just like that. Again, thread the pen up on there. Find the center. Put that into the center. Push down hard on the pen. Pull that off. And then it's a matter of threading the wick up through the hole in the side. And there's another one ready to go. Okay. Now, when you get your candle making business going, great guns, remember you got to do <laughs> a couple thousand of these a week in order to be viable. Oh, not really. If I could sell 100 candles a week, I'd be just fine. So, and it doesn't take long to do this. <laughs> that lid was on there. Again, a little pinch of sticky stuff. Grab a wick, form it into a ball. Put it on the end, feed it through a straw, center it in the cup, push it down firm, and thread it through the holes. And there's another one done. That's seven. It doesn't take long to do 12 of these. I want to get where I'm doing a dozen or so a day, at least to get started with, but 
I have to buy more wax. I have another I have another dozen jars, although larger jars. I've got wide mouth. What are these? 12 ounce? Um, 6, 8, 10, 12. Yeah, 12 ounce jars instead of 8 ounce jars. Now those may require a bit bigger wick. I gotta check my, my supplier and see what my wicking supplier recommends. I'm actually going to try to use wood wicks for the larger ones. Um, I'm going to use these wicks for this batch. Oh, there we go. Had that one a little bit sideways through the straw. Um, and the wood wicks work exactly the same way, only you don't have to hold them and center them. They kind of once you stick them in, they're a wood wick. They're they're firm. They're not they're not floppy like these cotton wicks are. So they don't need to be held in place. They do need to be set in though. And so I'm going to have to develop a different tool for setting them in. Something different than this one. Come on, get in that little hole. Come on. Oh. Sometimes twisting them seems to help. Helps thread them in. There we go. Three more. down to hold the wick. There you are. There's a dozen of them all set ready to go. Um, and I have an extra wick and I've got an extra insert and a whole lot more of this goo stuff left. Um, the lady at the store that I bought that from said that goes a long ways and she was correct. That's going to go a very long way. So put this wick back in the wick bag so I can remember what it is. Put that tube in there with it, I guess. Since that goes right along with that. And there we go. I'm all set. Now, I've got the lids here in the box. So I'll put all these back in this box to transport them into the kitchen. Where we're going to do the pouring. Going to do the melt in the pour. And I still have to work on developing my labels. I bought my labels. I had they're here. I just have to. So I bought my labels. They're here. I just got to uh, design them. Now. I got to design the labels to see what they're going to be. Um, I'm not even sure what I'm going to name the candle business. Like I'm really in a in a dilemma over that. I think. All of this is going to come under the ballywick of Grandpa's retirement plan. And so, probably going to have something to do with that, with Grandpa's retirement plan. So, but we shall see. We will see. So, all right. Stay tuned for part two, where I will be melting the wax and pouring it. So, thanks for watching, kids. I appreciate you guys watching while I'm getting this candle business going. Please do like, subscribe, and share. And, you know, uh, like I always like to say, be good, be careful, take good care of one another, and we'll see you at the next video. Bye.